Hey everybody, it's JP here from BigSexyBeast.com and this is going to be a two-part video walk-around series of my off-road setup, the FJ Cruiser and the off-road teardrop trailer. Uh, before I forget and get started, if you go to store.BigSexyBeast.com, we've got some new patches and stickers and soon hats uh, that are out there that have the logo on it, so we certainly appreciate your support. Uh, so let's get into the walk around and show you what uh, how we've set things up. All right, so this is the uh, the off road setup that we use when we're going really deep in the back country. Um, it is a 2007 FJ Cruiser, uh, so first year that they made them, um, and a 2016 uh, Moby XTR1 uh, off road teardrop trailer. Uh, they actually don't make these anymore. Uh, but I'm going to do a walk around um, of each of these separately. It'll be a two part video. The first part will be about the FJ, uh, the second part will be about the Moby. And I'll take you through kind of how both of those are set up. Uh, they're set up in a way that um, you can obviously camp in them as a system, um, as well as detach the FJ. And the FJ is a completely standalone uh, camping setup. As it sets right here, um, I can pretty easily sleep six people two people on top of the FJ in that rooftop tent, at least two people in the top of the rooftop tent on top of the Moby, and two people inside the Moby. Um, and so it, uh, it's kind of a traveling hotel in some ways. Um, but let me get into each one of the two, and um, uh, you can jump to part two if you're really interested in the Moby, or you can stay with part one if you want to see the FJ, or we'd love to have you watch them both. So the lights on the FJ, uh, we've got quite a bit of lights and we've changed them a little bit over the years. Um, but obviously the, uh, the stock headlights, both those bulbs have been upgraded with a higher output bulb. Uh, we've got uh, just kind of some uh, spot fog lights in the ARB bumper. Uh, these IPFs in the center here, um, I believe those are an 8 inch IPF. Those are really cool because they're waterproof. Um, those lights have been underwater, um, crossing creeks and things like that in the FJ. They put out a pretty good uh, bit of light. They're an older technology, but they just work. They've been on there since I've had the truck, uh, so that's 13 years now, and um, and they just work. One of them's even got a cracked lens, and it still just works great. Uh, last summer, I uh, replaced what were four round KC headlights up top there uh, with um, a new set of rigid lights. I've got the, uh, the side shooters, um, here on both sides and then in the center I've got a spot flood combo uh, 20 inch rigid and uh, This thing puts out plenty of light in fact it, it puts out so much light that the majority of the time I don't end up using that entire light setup which has kind of led me to change the way that I think about lighting and the way that I did the Tundra So this is a 2007 FJ Cruiser, it's the first year they made them. I think I actually got this in 2006. I bought it new um, and I've owned it ever since. And so I've had this thing now almost 13 years. Um, it's an absolute tank. I've had really no trouble with it at all. The only thing that's really ever been done to it other than routine maintenance stuff is right after I put the snorkel on, I drove it through a really, really deep um, muddy area. The pulley bearings on the engine started squealing because the factory FJ bearings on the pulleys are not uh, sealed bearing. Uh, I took it back into the Toyota dealership and they said, hey, this is an off-road vehicle. They warranted it for me. Um, and so beyond that, uh, no, no mechanical issues with this truck at all in those 13 years. I'm about 125,000 miles and uh, expect that I'll do at least three or four times that in this, uh, this vehicle. And this is a vehicle that I plan on just keeping forever. Um, so a few things about the mods, which are numerous on this truck. I've, I've left almost nothing, uh, nothing stock on this truck over the years. By the way, this truck is always dirty because it's always being used out in the back country. Um, it's its main mission in life. It's not a daily driver. It's just a camping truck um, and an adventure truck. So uh, maybe I'll start with suspension and tires um, and then kind of come up from there. Uh, so uh, when I bought the FJ, the dealer had put a three inch lift on it. I changed that over to a stage two, five and a half inch lift. Um, it has coilovers in the front um, and in the back, I've got Fox, uh, Fox shocks with remote reservoirs. 
on top of that five and a half inch lift, it is setting on uh, 35, 12.50. Um, I believe they're 18 inch rims. So 35, 1250, 18 inch rims. Um, I'm currently running uh, the BFG uh, all terrains, the KO2s. Um, I've had this truck long enough that I've had five or six different sets of tires on it. I've had Nito Mud Grapplers. I've had um, Cooper, what would now be the equivalent of the STT Max or STT Pro. Um, I had KM3s on it, uh, Pro Comp Extreme All Terrains, and then the BFG KO2s. Out of all of those tires, um, the BFG KO2s are, are some of my favorite. The Pro Comp tires actually were pretty pretty darn good too. The KM3s with the softer compound in this heavy truck were out exceptionally fast and the Nito Mud Grapplers were out exceptionally fast. Um, so uh, in addition to the suspension lift, you know, on the FJs, if you're going to run 35s, you have to do a body mount chop. Uh, so I've had the body mount chop done on this one. Uh, really nice, uh, really nice job actually. The guy um, welded and boxed it back in, plated it uh, in and um, cleaned it up and I've had no issues with that as all at all. Probably the most used accessory on this entire truck are those rock sliders there. Um, less for rocks, uh, quite frankly, and more for trees. When you're running over a tree and it pops up and it hits what would be under panel damage there, or that lower panel damage, um, those things are pristine because those rock sliders take all the abuse. They have been on a few rocks over the years. On the front here, I've got the uh, the ARB bull bar. I love this thing. It again makes this truck just an absolute tank. Um, I will say that that is a very heavy um, accessory uh, to put a bull bar like that on there. And in total, when I'm not towing the trailer, uh, this truck gets at best about 11 miles to the gallon. So it's not a super fuel efficient truck. Quite frankly, when I'm towing the trailer, you really don't even notice it that much. Um, because the uh, uh, I maybe get nine when I'm towing the trailer, so there's not a big difference. Like in the Tundra, there's a really big difference between those two, um, but with this one, there's not. Uh, the truck has been regeared uh, from the factory gearing. I believe I have the 456s uh, in here, uh, regeared it for the 35s as well as pulling the trailer. No issues with hunting um, gear for gears or anything like that. Uh, I've got the ARB Safari Snorkel. On the side, it does get used. I've had water up over the hood um, in this truck. Um, the ARB Safari Snorkel goes into an AFE cold air intake that I'll show you a little bit later. That took a little bit of doing to, uh, to figure out. Uh, I'm kind of moving along here. We've got a Warren 9,000 uh, pound winch uh, in the, uh, the bumper. Uh, I have used this winch to pull other people out. I've used this winch to pull trees out of the road. I've never really used this winch to uh, to self recover. I did try it one time when I was up on the side of a rock overhang, um, and I was in a spot where I couldn't even winch off of it. So that's the only time that I've ever really tried to use the winch to uh, to pull myself. I will say that 9,000 pounds is probably not enough for this truck because um, it's just a heavy truck, and with that 9,000 pounds, you really almost always have to use a snatch block if you were going to pull yourself out. Uh, the uh, the high lift jack, I believe that's actually not, uh, I believe that's a knockoff version of the high lift jack. Um, I've had three or four of them over the years. I'm actually not a big fan of those. I, I kind of refer to them as death scissors because um, they're not the, uh, uh, I don't think they're the, the safest thing in the world to use. They do work um, for everything from self-recovery to jacking up a tall vehicle like this to a uh, I mean, you opening a vehicle up if you need to get somebody out. I mean, you can do all sorts of things with those. Um, but they're not the safest thing in the world. And they do require a bit of maintenance um, to, uh, to kind of keep them in good, uh, good working order. Uh, I don't know if you notice it or not here, but there's a uh, plug hanging out here. It's not a diesel engine block heater. That actually goes to a trickle charger um, because this thing stays parked in between adventures. And so that keeps the, uh, the battery topped off there for me. Uh, let's see, let's work our way around the outside, see if there's anything else to, uh, to talk about. Nothing really on the suspension mods and things. Um, I'll talk about the engine mods and those uh, a little bit later. Uh, so up top, we have an Auto Home US uh, Columbus variant uh, hard shell rooftop tent. 
I bought it um, about the same time that I bought the FJ, so I've had it at least 10 or 11 years. It started out life white, and a buddy of mine had borrowed it, and he painted it uh, this rubberized black. Um, I actually like that, uh, like that quite a bit. When I bought this thing, I was kind of concerned about, well, how's it gonna hold up, uh, being fiberglass, and um, uh, here we are uh, 11, 12 years later, and um, I still use this thing um, extensively. Um, all right, working our way across the back here. I have a external antenna here that's for a uh, LTE signal booster. I can roll into a spot that has almost uh, no uh, cell phone coverage at all or no cell phone coverage at all. And typically I can turn that on and boost at least one or two bars of LTE so I can make a phone call or even in some cases do a video conference in places where you wouldn't normally have signal. Uh, the only spot that I've ever been where I really couldn't boost signal that much was uh, in several places in Wyoming uh, this past summer. I just couldn't even boost a signal. Uh, also across the back here, I have an ARB awning. Um, I think that one's a meter and a quarter awning. Um, and then it comes out about two meters. Um, it's intended to be an awning for the cooking area, um, which I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, but I actually end up don't end up using that awning that much. I've used it a few times um, over the years, but uh, it's not something that I end up using quite a bit. Uh, Gobi, uh, Gobi ladder up the back here, uh, which is something that I use all the time because it allows me to go in and out of the tent and not have to use um, the, uh, the, the ladder off the side of the tent. And then also kind of working around the back, kind of how the trailer hooks up here. Um, I've got a, uh, a multi-axis hitch uh, that moves this way, this way, up, down, side to side, uh, so that you can have the truck this way and the trailer that way and, uh, and not bind. Um, I've also set it up so that it will charge the trailer batteries um, as I'm driving, which I'll cover a little bit later. Let me uh, work our way around to the other side. All right, over here on this side of the FJ, um, I've got one of the original road showers there. I think that holds four, four and a half gallons of water. Um, I use it more for washing dishes um, than I use it for a shower. Um, although uh, we did use it a few times for a shower this past summer uh, out in Wyoming. Um, in this area right here uh, where you can see the cable lock, uh, normally there's two four and a half gallon rotopacks uh, that go right in there so that you've got nine gallons of extra gas um, on this truck which is a good thing to have considering uh, how much, uh, how thirsty this, uh, this truck is. Uh, so let's, uh, let's move under the hood and show you what's going on up there. As I warned you, this truck is, uh, is always dirty because it's always getting used. Um, under the hood here, we have an AFE um, cold air intake uh, to help her breathe a little bit better. Um, I had to make a custom um, coupling between the snorkel and the AFE cold air intake. Um, also back here, uh, we've got the onboard ARB air compressor that runs the air lockers. Can't see them that much down there, but this uh, also has JBA uh, ceramic headers on it. And so um, the engine's breathing quite a bit better than factory because you've got a cold air intake here. You've got the JBA headers there. Uh, which probably brings the uh, the factory horsepower up over 300. I think 305 or so is where uh, where I would estimate this thing to be at. The wiring and battery a bit of a mess right now. So one of the things I've got kind of on the list for this is an S pod to uh, to clean some of this up. Uh, but I just switched uh, switched the battery out for this 105 amp hour uh, North Star um, uh, X2 power AGM battery. Um, these things have gotten some great reviews. I've got the exact same battery on my Tundra now. Um, and so it's kind of the best of both worlds of having a uh, starting battery, but also a deep cycle battery here. The FJ does have a dual battery setup, which the, uh, the Tundra does not. Um, but uh, I think those are the main things uh, going on under the, uh, under the hood here. Looking inside the, uh, the cockpit here, nothing really too radical um, inside the cockpit these days. Always keep a headlamp here in the uh, the door panel. Um, on the I've got an old iPad that I keep uh, Gaia and Pandora on, and it's got a Mob Armor uh, magnetic map mount there, which I highly recommend. These are pretty awesome. You just pop it back in place. 
Um, and you know, most of the switches for the lights and everything like that are, uh, are all in there. Um, pretty, pretty simple, pretty clean. Um, let's see what else inside here. Only other notable thing inside here is obviously Mr. Scout. Um, he, uh, he goes right there and then he keeps his stuff down here, food, his jacket, uh, those kind of things. Um, and then on our longer trips, um, we take the fridge that you'll see out of the Moby. It goes right here, fridge freezer, and I'll show that to you a little bit later. All right, let's take a look at the uh, the rooftop tent here on the truck so you can see it. So, pretty simple and straightforward. Put a latch here, and this guy, step up on my ladder here with it, see if I can do this without falling off with the camera. So that's all there is to setting this thing up. Again, it's spring cleaning time, so it's dirty in here. Uh, but you've got a queen mattress up here. It's got gas struts on the side and uh, makes a, a nice two-person tent. Um, I've lived in this thing two months at a time um, off-grid, which is fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite uh, camping and sleeping setups um, with any of my camping vehicles. Um, you can kind of get a sense here. I'll walk around. So you can see also on the front there is a 100 watt thin film solar panel uh, for recharging the second battery, which I'll show you when I show you the kitchen area. Um, but that is the, that's the way the sleeping setup works on the FJ. So when the FJ is disconnected from the trailer, um, you, uh, you've got the rooftop tent. And it's actually been used more like that in the 13 years that I've had it than any other configuration. It's been all the way up to Newfoundland and the Labrador Sea, um, all over uh, northern Canada. Um, it's a great setup, super comfortable, super easy. Take it up, you know, set up camp in 30 seconds, take down the tent in 30 seconds, um, and be back on the road. And I really like the, the simplicity of that setup. All right, take you to the back of the, uh, the FJ now and uh, show you the last bit of the setup here. So water, um, six gallons, uh, use the Yeti silo, uh, six gallon here. And the cool thing about this is um, really simple, no power, um, just gravity feed uh, running water in the Yeti. And then if you need to take it out to fill it up, you just undo the straps, take it out to fill it up. And I keep, uh, dry goods and kitchen supplies and things like that in here. I'll show you the stove here in just a second. Um, electronics over here, and we'll do a detailed video on electronics later. Uh, second battery setup um, and solar charge controller there. Fuse panel here. Second battery uh, stays in here uh, in the drawer. That's where I normally keep recovery gear and things like that when I'm off road. Um, and let me show you the stove setup because out of all the different stove setups that I've had over the years, this is by far the simplest cooking setup and quickest to set up. So I've built a table into the back of the FJ uh, that folds down. And I've redid this again a number of times over the years, but I keep coming back to this same setup with a single propane burner here. Uh, so when you're ready to cook, you just fold down and go. Uh, the bottle just screws onto the bottom here and then you take your pan and you're cooking and it uh, it's that simple got a nice prep area over here uh, for cooking and setup and so then the kitchen when you're uh, uh, ready to go and camp and cook you've got your water you've got your dry goods and your dishes and you've got your cooktop um, a propane burner and then prep area here and then when you're ready to put it all up, you just put the burner away, fold this up, and there you go. And it is the fastest and simplest setup I've got on any of the vehicles and um, probably my favorite. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. If, uh, if you like our content, please like this video. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. Also remember, if you go to store, 
www.bigsexybeast.com, store.bigsexybeast.com. We've got some new patches and stickers and soon hats uh, with uh, the Big Sexy Beast logo on it. Um, and we really always appreciate your support. So hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.